there from dates to lunar cycles to runes, different languages, and all of this structure needs to at some point be evoked in the score. It can't just be a series of moves. Um, I know when you first got the film, that was one of the things you carefully did was just pour over Tolkien's writing to get that sense of structure and how could that be related musically. Well, the, the, the score uh, that I wrote for the book took almost four years. Uh, Tolkien's writing of creating Lord of the Rings uh, took 16 years, is how long he, he worked on it. And really the score, it has good structure and good form because of his, his writing, really. Uh, because I'm creating an image in music of his, his creation, so I inherently have the good bones that he created in his work. You came at it largely from a cultural standpoint, in, in terms of thematic approach. We, sh we should mention that this is a remarkable for a film story, remarkable, remarkable for any sort of creation, to have this many leitmotifs that are consistently developed throughout the course of the film. If, if we look at The Lord of the Rings as a, a one, three film story, um, there's over 90 different some of them long themes, some of them short themes, but all of them start from a very specific point and develop to a very specific point. Right. Uh, the, the leitmotif idea was really came out of storytelling. It was a way to give clarity to the story. I mean, Lord of the Rings is considered one of the most complex fantasy worlds ever created. And Peter Jackson, who made the film, has such a huge task to do as well because he wanted to take a story as complex as this uh, and tell this story, like Fellowship of the Ring, uh, which is two books of Lord of the Rings, but he had to tell that story in a little less than three hours on screen. And so the idea of using the music in, in, to, ex, to clarify cultures and to understand objects in the story was something that he always felt was a good way to tell the story. And also, he felt that uh, the music should be really part of the storytelling uh, fabric of the, of, the, of the films. And it's an older technique, really. It's something that really more was practiced more in mo films from the, you know, more the golden age of, right. of movies from the 40s, uh, early 50s. It was a way of using music in a very specific way to, to uh, work in the film. So it was, for me, it was a great gift, really. I had this great book. I had great, uh, great director who was, uh, had great, uh, you know, wonderful sense of the imagery and, and, and wonderful storytelling. And I worked very collaboratively with the three screenwriters. It was Peter Jackson, uh, Fran Walsh, and Philip Aboyans. And the three of them kind of supplied different parts of the equation. Like Peter had a great sense of the epic and the spectacle and the visual, wonderful sense. And, and Fran had, a, had more of the sense of the smaller things, of the relationship between Sam and Frodo and, the, and Gollum's uh, schizophrenia. And, uh, Philippa was an expert in ring mythology and taught me a lot about what inspired Tolkien to create Lord of the Rings and how, how once the books were published, it, it's had such an influence on uh, 20th century culture and, and, and on our lives. Um, and, you know, in, in my research, you go back to Wagner and, and his work creating, you know, his, how he showed us how to use uh, light motifs and thematic material in telling a story. So, I mean, there is connections to this type of storytelling. Although in, in flavor, your writing here is closer